Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm bringing you another single issue review. This is one that just came out uh, yesterday, last new comic book day. The issue in question this week is Time Before Time, number one from Image Comics. This is a brand new series that's centered around the idea of time travel, and they work with it in a really cool way. This exceeded any expectations that I might have had for this issue. I really didn't know anything going into it uh, because they didn't reveal too much about the actual premise of the series, but like I said, it deals with time travel, and it was a really great issue. So for the creative team, we've got Declan Shalvey and Rory McConville on writing. They're both Irish creators, and this whole creative team even worked on some sort of series for another independent publisher a while back. So they have some experience together and they're uh, reuniting for time before time. And then the art on this issue is by Joe Palmer. Honestly, looking at the art for the first time when I cracked open this book uh, was very discouraging. It's a super like 2D cartoonish art style. Um, and I thought that would be a bad thing because the art does not look great at once, but I adapted to it really quickly. That actually ended up being one of my favorite parts of the book. Uh, Joe Palmer did a super good job with facial expressions especially. Uh, you could really see the emotion in the characters' faces when they were having reactions to different things that happened, and there are some very shocking moments in this issue. And actually the art flowed super well with the writing because I feel like a lot of times when an artist is just super good with their work and it's really beautiful artwork, I have a trouble like reading the dialogue because then I have to look at the artwork afterwards. I feel like I have to appreciate it. But in this, it was still like good enough art, of course, but I didn't feel like I had to look at the art and take longer to read the comic. It was just a really smooth read. So I think this creative team is doing a great job working together. Time Before Time is mainly set in a future in 2040 where, as I said, things are pretty dystopian. The world has been flooded and I think pollution, global warming has been taking its toll. It's really not a good place to be in and um, they're needing to wear masks when going outside in certain areas like cities. But this secret agency called the Syndicate has somehow figured out time travel. And uh, it's very top secret, but they've got workers who help them out. I'm pretty sure that the government doesn't even know about this syndicate that has figured out time travel. And what the syndicate does is they give people a choice secretly that uh, people are able to t use a big sum of money in order for them to be taken back in time or forward in time to some time period in which things aren't quite as bad as they are in the present. And because of how like top secret the syndicate is, they're able to transport anyone. It doesn't matter if they've murdered people. Who We, we see somebody who's like a, a criminal in this issue being taken back to the olden days. I wasn't fully understanding how the relationship with the syndicate and the government really works, or if the syndicate is the government. I'm not sure, but it seems like it was a pretty top secret, separate thing that they're doing just for the money. It was just funny to me that whoever invented this time travel, whoever figured it out, wouldn't have just like handed that over to some people who could use it for a good cause, like possibly the government, right? Joe, Joe, this is it. We figured out time travel. No way, finally, after all these years, we did it. Yeah, it's gonna be our secret. No, 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 we agreed to tell the government. We're gonna make money from the patent. That's not a problem. Yeah, we're not gonna tell anyone and we're gonna make a lot of money. But why? There's no reason. I don't know. I'm now going to be getting into spoilers. I'm going to talk about everything that actually happens in this issue, the plot, the characters, and everything. So uh, just spoiler warning, if you'd like to read this issue before my review, go ahead and do that right now. So let's pull this off the stand and crack the book open and let's start talking about the plot. So Time Before Time centers around two main characters mostly. Of course, there's a bunch of supporting cast that have also been uh, introduced in this first issue. There's not too many characters to keep track of, so it's still pretty simple and easy to understand. But the main character is Tatsuo, who is working, I think, maybe to pay off some debt that he has to the syndicate and he's been working here for years and it's really a job that he's not enjoying and his best friend Oscar is also a big character. They've both been having some problems with uh, time jumps that actually can affect you badly, make you sick. And Tatsuo especially is not enjoying his job because he's been like vomiting after uh, he comes back from every time jump putting people in the past and they want to escape their job somehow. The issue opens off with Tatsuo dropping off a mom and her kid in 1987 so that they can have a happier life and the kid is like really annoyed that there's no Wi-Fi. But after he gets back, uh, Tatsuo goes and has a drink with his friend Oscar. They're talking about maybe forming a plan to escape this present day where they're both having to work for the syndicate. They're really not enjoying their jobs and they decide that maybe it's a crazy idea but maybe they could take one of the capsules, one of the few remaining capsules that the syndicate even has left and jump backwards in time and just live out their lives. Maybe even 
adventure around different time periods. And just within the first few pages, they decide to actually go through with that plan and they're about to go try to steal this pod. And I was gonna say, like, this is so off the bat. I was, I was thinking it was almost kind of cheesy how they're just immediately going into this grand adventure. Um, but another coworker of theirs tells Oscar that he has another gig he has to go to to go get some shipments from the future to bring back to the syndicate. So I guess this company is actually making deals with people from the past, present, future. They're really involved in pretty much everything from all the different time periods. So they're not able to go on this quest quite yet because Oscar needs to go on this mission. Meanwhile, while Oscar is working on that gig, Tatsuo gets another client and this is the murderer I was talking about. This guy says that it was mostly in self-defense, but he's really happy to be going back in time. He uh, goes back to the year 1963, and Tatsuo is realizing just what a scummy company this syndicate is. He's really unhappy to be working for them, especially since he's basically just unleashing a murderer in the olden days. He's probably just going to end up killing more people in that time period. So they're really not doing the right thing. And I was wondering at this point, it was making me think, how does time travel actually work in this world? Like, would inserting that guy into the past affect the present? Would he kill people and then they would end up uh, dead? later on in the present or maybe it's just like a different alternate universes type thing where when you send someone in the past it doesn't affect the present or the future i'm not sure that stuff can be really confusing and i could see them taking that path and really exploring that aspect of time travel but i kind of hope they don't because that's something that like marvel does so much they deal with time travel pretty frequently and it's not my favorite thing but when he gets back tatsu ends up having uh, a meeting with his boss, who is the leader of the syndicate, and uh, through this issue we see a few scenes with this boss, who is seemingly being controlled by his father. He's trying to fulfill whatever his father wants in order to keep this position. And he seems like a decent guy. He's nice to Tatsuo and everything. He's good to his workers. But I think his father is really the main villain that we've been seeing. No, we haven't seen him in person actually in this comic yet. But with the phone calls, it seems like the evil one behind everything. But his boss tells Tatsuo that Oscar was actually kidnapped and taken away before he could get the shipment because of some sort of territorial problems that were going on in the future that he went to. And that Tatsuo should go see him in the welcome back party that a lot of his co-workers are having for him down at a club. And here we get a shocking reveal. His boss hadn't told him this, but it turns out that Oscar is actually deeply aged. He's a very old man now, and that was one of the side effects of time traveling. Basically, he went to this future and was kidnapped, and then he lived out his entire life in a jail cell awaiting trial and a bunch of other things. He just describes his whole experience in a scene that we see in the nightclub and uh, of course Tatsuo is deeply alarmed. He was going to have so much fun with uh, Oscar when they're going to steal the time capsule and now it's too late. There's basically no way to de-ageify Oscar and it's a really sad moment. This is really like the turning point where I think Tatsuo realizes that he can't keep working for this company because things like this can happen. He had just let a murderer loose in the past and his friend Oscar is now about on the verge of death because he's so old. But in a very final scene, Tatsuo is actually tasked with finally carrying out that shipment that Oscar was supposed to complete before he uh, was stuck in that future, but on his way he's intercepted by an FBI agent. She holds him at gunpoint and forces him to bring her into the time capsule to a certain year, and they barely manage to get out in time except one gunshot from one of the co-workers gets through the hull of the ship and messes something up. They end up emerging in an unknown year. You can see everything's all messed up here. It looks like it might be like 4063. You can't tell though. They're in some sort of warped reality even, some sort of post-apocalyptic future and uh, Tatsuo finds out that this is an FBI agent who probably has found out about the syndicate's scummy ways and wants to figure out time travel, bring it back to the government. So that's the big twist at the end. Now they're stranded together in this alternate reality. It's almost just like what Tatsuo and Oscar wanted to do at the beginning, except now he's with an unwanted FBI agent. So from here, the story should definitely pick up. I think it was just this first issue was all leading into whatever adventures they're going to have uh, later on. So that's the plot of this first issue. I really enjoyed it. It exceeded all of my expectations. And it's one of the best issues from Image I've had in a long time. They've been doing a good job on the few series of theirs that I have been getting. But I think Declan Shalvey and uh, McConville did a great job on the writing. Like I said, the art was pretty simple, except I think it flowed extremely well with the story and everything. And I'm excited to see where the series goes. It is ongoing as far as I know, so I'll be picking it up until it ends. So we'll see with the series. I really don't know where they're going to go, but I think there's a lot of cool possibilities that they could explore. And as 
for my actual final rating of the issue, I usually give you guys some sort of something out of 10. This one, I'm giving it the complete 10 out of 10. I just love this issue. There are so many great things about it. The writing, the artwork, just the story and the concept of it was great. And I highly recommend that you guys check this one out if you haven't already. The first issue just came out yesterday and there's probably plenty of copies left at your local comic shop. Go check it out. And before we go, if you did enjoy this video at all, make sure to click that subscribe button. You can also hit that notifications bell, which is sitting right next to it. You'll be notified every single time I post a new video if you don't want to miss any. So that's everything for me for today. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Bye guys.